Before we start this video, I just want to say how truly touched and honoured I am to be doing this video. I have done many, many videos this year, and when I decided to do this video, I just became really excited and was counting down the days till I got to do this one for you guys, because I'm a massive Brandon Sanderson lover. If you can't tell, if you can't tell. <laughs> so today we are going to be talking Cosmia Universe. I'm going to tell you what the Cosmia Universe is, then I'm going to tell you my reading order, and then I'm going to talk about some suggested reading orders so that you guys know if you're intrigued to pick up these books, where you should begin and where you should go from there and all that kind of stuff. So Welcome! Let's get right into it. I just wanted to point out these books up here, and the reason that I'm doing this is because if you're from Australia or the UK, you're probably used to the white colour versions. I will not be having the white colour versions in my videos, but I'll explain that during the video. Oh, my Sanderson shelf is so empty. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this video. Today we are discussing the Brandon Sanderson Cosmia Reading order. Let's get right into it. So, in case you weren't aware, Brandon Sanderson, quite a while ago, decided that he was going to write a number of different series that were adult fantasy books. He was also going to be linking all of these series together in a certain way. So, imagine, if you will, the planets that we have in our solar system. Every single planet is completely different. Every single series in Brandon Sanderson's adult fantasy worlds are completely different, but all the planets in the world link together thanks to the solar system. Every single series in Brandon Sanderson's world linked together in a Cosmia universe. So today we're going to get into all of this stuff and I'm incredibly excited. First of all, I just want to point out what I was saying earlier. You saw those white covers that they're actually just above um, this shelf that I have here, they're just above there. Uh, those are the UK version. Now, there are people in America who prefer the UK version. There are people in Australia and the UK who prefer the UK version. For me particularly, I do not prefer the UK version for many reasons. One of them is aesthetics. This is a white bookshelf, as you can see, and having white books in a white bookshelf doesn't really look that good as far as I'm concerned. I don't like the look of it. And I prefer for all of my individual books to stand out and have their own character and for all of them to be white it just doesn't work for me it might work for you but if you prefer the white version then you're just looking to get the UK edition rather than the US edition which is totally fine I highly 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 recommend Amazon they've been absolutely amazing regardless of where you live you can get both the white version and the colored versions now let's get into the timeline order now Brandon Sanderson doesn't release his books chronologically there is a chronological publication order but he does not necessarily release every book in each mini series in chronological order he will release a Mistborn book, then he'll release a Stormlight Archive book, then he'll release another book here, another book there, another book there. So we do need to be mindful of that. We also need to be mindful of the fact that the Mistborn series has not yet been completed, and the Stormlight Archives I think is projected to be at least 10 books, so that has not been completed either. But with that in mind, you can read what is published now, and there's a whole ton of books that have been published, so we're going to go into timeline order. Now, as I said earlier, all of these books take place in their, all of these series, I should say, take place in their own world, but each world is connected by the one universe, and there are little connections here and there that if you look hard enough, you can see them between the series. So we're going to start off with the earliest timeline in the Cosmia universe. And if you're going to read uh, via uh, timeline order, then you would start with Elantris. Now, I have not read Elantris, so I just want you to be mindful of that. This is, yeah, the earliest book in that timeline. Once you have read Elantris, you would then pick up Arcanum Unbounded, which as well I have not read, and you would read the two books that come after this, which is Elantris, The Lost World, and The Emperor's Soul, both in this book. So Arcanum Unbounded, for those of you who don't know, is a very special book because it is a compendium of short stories of little secret things that you don't see happening in the main series. So 
Elantris comes first, then in Arcanum Unbounded you would read Elantris The Lost World, then you would read The Emperor's Soul. Coming up next in the timeline would be your Mistborn series. So you would start off with the first book, The Final Empire, then you'd move on to Mistborn Book 2, The Well of Ascension, and then you would move on to Book 3, The Hero of Ages. Then you would go back to Arcanum Unbounded and read Mistborn A Secret History, which is, again, a part of this special book. <laughs> then, if you want to continue on in the timeline, you'd move on to Mistborn Era 2, The Alloy of Law. You would then move on to book number 5, Shadows of Self. And then you would move on to book number 6, The Bands of Mourning. Once you've completed what has currently been published for Mistborn Era 2, because not only Mistborn, but Mistborn Era 2 has not uh, been complete yet, so we're still waiting for those books to still be published. Once you've read the first six books in Mistborn, then you would move on to the standalone Warbreaker. This is uh, the white version, but uh, Warbreaker revolves around colour, so to me, I'm happy to have Warbreaker as a white book. This currently is a standalone. Brandon Sanderson does plan to release a book that is set after Warbreaker. Now, there are a lot of booktubers out there that are saying that it's going to become a duology, it's like going to become a series, but Brandon Sanderson is actually not saying this, so please know, Warbreaker is a standalone, and then Brandon Sanderson is going to release another standalone that you would read after Warbreaker. But at the moment, if we're looking at what has been published, next up is Warbreaker, your standalone, and then that's when you would go into the way of uh, the... Stormlight Archives. So you would start with The Way of Kings, then you would move on to Words of Radiance, then you would move on to Oathbringer, then I don't have this book, but then you would move on to Rhythm of War, which is the fourth and currently final book that has been published for the Stormlight Archives. This book was published in uh, this month, in November, so you'd be right up to date with Stormlight Archives once you've read The Rhythm of War. Once you've read The Rhythm of War, then you would go on to, and I don't have copies of these either, so I'll put a picture of them up in just a moment, you would then go on to this series, the White Sand series. Now, I do plan on reading them. I don't like graphic books, or if you're more used to the older lingo, I'm not a fan of comic books, and that's what these are. They are comic books, but Brandon Sanderson has insisted that they are part of the Cosmia universe. So you would read the volumes in the White Sands, and then you would have completed in timeline order, all of the books that have currently been published for the Brandon Sanderson Cosmia world. So, now that you have timeline order, let me talk to you about the order that I've read them in, with a couple of pointers of things that I suggest you do do, and a couple of things that I suggest you do not do, because I tried them and they didn't work for me. Let's get into that right now. Before we do that, I just wanted to once again go back to talking about the white cover version versus colour. So, just a moment ago I showed you The Way of Kings. Now, what's interesting about this copy of The Way of Kings versus the Australian, uh, or UK, I should say, uh, but we have avail available here in Australia, a copy of The Way of Kings is not only that it is a white cover, as opposed to, in my opinion, the more superior, beautiful, colourful version, but also the UK version is split into two parts. So both of these books are The Way of Kings, it's just you have a part one and a part two. The reason for this is because there were publishers out there who thought that 1,000 pages is going to be too much for readers, so we have about 500 pages or 600 pages in part one and 500 or so, whatever it is, in part two. Now, again, this is where I highly, highly, highly recommend Amazon. Whether you are in America or whether you are in Australia or the UK or wherever you are, if you go onto Amazon, you should be able to see uh, links to purchasing either of these editions. I got these two in Australia because they were easily available. You can walk into any bookstore and basically purchase 
part one and part two, but I wanted the one book bind up as well as the colourful version. I wanted the one book bind up. So I went onto Amazon and I had no issue with this. It came about two, three weeks later. It arrived on my doorstep. So that's what I recommend if you want to do that. If you want the one book bind up, colourful version, and you're in Australia, go to Amazon. If you want the white version, also go to Amazon. They'll sort you out. Trust me, they've been amazing with me. Now we're going to talk about the order that I read the Cosmia World in. Now, I have not read all of the Cosmia World books, so here I'm going to give you a very quick intro of what I have not read. I have not read Elantris. I have not read Arcanum Unbounded. Um, right now, as of today, I have not read Oathbringer. I'm reading it next month. I have not read Rhythm of War, and I've not read the White Sands series either, but I've read all of the others. So I can only talk to you about the books that I have read, and I'll probably do an updated version of this once I've read everything. But with that in mind, with what I haven't read, to therefore help you know what I have read in mind, this is how I did it. So... I was traversing uh, YouTube in late January and I hadn't even heard of BookTube. And then I came across a couple of BookTubers, found out what it was, decided I wanted to do my own channel. And there was one particular BookTuber who was going on and 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 on about one particular book and how much she loves this book that it became so infectious for me that I knew I just had to get a copy and at the very least try it out for myself. This is what started the Cosme Universe for me. I had not heard of Brandon Sanderson at the time either. So, this booktuber was continually recommending The Final Empire, book one in the Mistborn series. So, I ended up purchasing a mass market, uh, well, I ended up purchasing a, I think it's UK, mass market paperback version. I'll show you what that looks like. So, I was so incredibly excited about Mistborn by the time I got to ordering because of this booktuber's insistence on how good it was and repeating it in so many videos that I ended up purchasing the book box set. Uh, these books are really small, so if I show you the difference between heights, there, as you can see, there's a big difference between them. These ones are really small, and they were really hard for me to read as well. I while these books are a tiny bit floppy, when you go to open them up, you really kind of have to break the spine in order to read them. And I did not appreciate that, but I did start with this. I then went on to the white cover versions because they are easier to read. But ultimately, this is the version that I kept seeing the booktuber talk about. And I prefer the look of this one. This is the American edition. Back to my reading order now that you've heard all of that potentially unnecessary information. So I started off reading The Final Empire, the Mistborn Era 1 series first. As I've told you, I have not read Elantris, and I didn't know about Elantris at the time. I started reading The Final Empire thinking I was just going to read Mistborn. I hadn't even heard of the Cosmic Universe. I love this book so much. When I finished reading it, I, well, now famously, said that this book revolutionized reading for me. It was that good. And it became my favorite book of the year all the way up until last month. This was my absolute favorite book of the year. So obviously I was intrigued enough to move on to book two in this series. So the next book that I read was The Well of Ascension. Now again, not this edition. I ultimately, once I'd read Well of Ascension, went back, uh, went to Amazon and ordered all of these beautiful editions. So I then, yeah, read Well of Ascension, and then I read book three in the Mistborn series, The Hero of Ages. That's where I started my Cosmia journey, not knowing that I was on a Cosmia journey, just wanted to read Mistborn, and then loved this and wanted to keep going. <laughs> so then... I still didn't know about the Cosmere Universe, so I wanted to get to the next book in the series, which was book four. I'd heard people say, if you're going to pick up book four, just be mindful that it's different, and in my mind, I thought, oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. Things happen at the end of The Hero of Ages that kind of, yeah, made me realise that the next book in the series would be different anyway, so I was prepared for that, but I was not prepared for just how different... Uh, era 2 was going to be, and I am going to give you guys that heads up. So, 
I moved on from The Hero of Ages, and I, back then, was a series purist. If I had gotten a certain way through a series, and I loved it so much, I wanted to continue on with that series before jumping on to another series, for example, in the Cosmere universe. So for me, I went to the very next book in the Mistborn series, which is book four, the Alloy of Law, before knowing that this was called Mistborn Era 2. I just went on to the Alloy of Law. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you guys. You can certainly do that. If you want to go straight on to the Alloy of Law, by all means, do that. But I'm going to give you, in a spoiler-free way, the heads up that I wish that I had. Heads up number one, in between book three, book three, and book four, we have a massive time jump that occurs. So not only is it different in that, um, you know, things are going to be different in the story, but all of the characters that were in this book are not going to appear in this book because we jump quite a bit away into the distance. So we have completely new characters, but also the culture and how just the world building, everything is very different in this world. The next thing I want to tell you is that this book and the Mistborn Era 2 series is published as an adult fantasy, as all of them are, but in my opinion, I would not categorize Mistborn Era 2 as an adult fantasy. This is where I want to give you that heads up. To me, the entire Mistborn Era 2 more reads more like a Western mystery than it does an adult fantasy. While in Mistborn Era 1, the focus is completely on magic, the magic system, and everything revolves around that. Everything that we learn, everything we are trying to do, everything that we go through is thanks to or because of the magic system in this world. So clearly this is a fantasy book. The magic system in Era 2 has evolved, because we've moved forward in time, but it's not what is the driving point of the book. The driving point of the book is that it, it comes across certainly as a Western, more than uh, this book, which does not come across as a Western at all, and also it's a mystery. So we have these two on the cover, and that's where this cover looks so much better than the white one. Um, so you can see it kind of looks kind of like your Sherlock and Holmes kind of Sherlock Holmes and whatever it is kind of deal here. And that's what it is. We're following a guy whose name is Waxillium, who is a detective who needs to solve mysteries. He ends up using magic, and so does his sidekick, but magic is not the point. Also, the second thing I have to tell you guys, because I did not know this and it let me down big time, is going into this book, loving Mistborn Era 1, loving the magic system, there are guns used in this uh, Mistborn Era 2. I have no problem with guns being used in a mortal type book, but if you are going to release a fantasy and you're going to use a mortal weapon, I'm not a fan of that, because if you have magic at your disposal, why would you need something so mortal like a gun? So I want you guys to be aware of that, that, you know, rather than using your magic to go on the offensive or the defensive against someone in a battle, Waxillium might just pull out a gun and try and shoot someone. So please be aware of that. Keeping that in mind, if you don't want to jump directly into Mistborn Era 2, you can go straight into Warbreaker if you want or you could, if you want to, go back to the first book in the timeline, Elantris. But with the warnings that I've given you in mind, if you're okay with that and you go in knowing, okay, it's not like Mistborn Era 1, we're getting a Western mystery where there is magic, but it's not the focus of the book, and you're good with that, then by all means move on to the Alloy of Law. If you then decide to move on to the Alloy of Law, the next book you would move on to would be Shadows of Self, which is book two in this era, or book five overall, and then you would close it off with The Bands of Mourning, book six, or book three in era two. If you decided to go on to either Warbreaker or Elantris after you read the third Mistborn book, then uh, you could then go back and read Mistborn Era 2 after that. If you decided to go straight from Mistborn Era 1 into Mistborn Era 2, once you've completed Mistborn Era 2, then I highly recommend reading Warbreaker. That's what I did, because this book is meant to be the bridging book that uh, comes at the end of Mistborn. Now, one thing I did not know is that Mistborn Era 2 
Book 3, or Mistborn Book 6, is not the final book in the Mistborn series. I thought it was. The way that it wraps up kind of made me feel like it definitely was, but no, it's not. So, this book, Warbreaker, is meant to be read once Mistborn concludes in the timeline. It still works, though, so because this is the latest published Mistborn book, you could still read this and then go on to this. But if by the time you're watching this video, the next book in this series has come out, I recommend completing all of the Mistborn uh, Era 2 books that you have available to you at the time you're watching this, then going on to Warbreaker, because this book is set after all of the Mistborn series have been completed. As I said to you guys earlier, Brandon Sanderson doesn't publish in sequential order, so he just kind of goes here, there, here, there, here, there. So, Miss, um, uh, Mistborn, Warbreaker is a standalone book, uh, as I think I was saying this earlier, but yeah, there is a second book that's intended to be released that you would, if you're reading in timeline order, read after this, but it's not available at the time of recording. If it is available to you now, I would read that after that one. But at the moment, this is a standalone, so pretty easy to get through. And that's what I read next, and that's what I would recommend you do. Some people recommend starting with Warbreaker, reading this book first, because it's a great a great way to dip your toe into the Brandon Sanderson world. It's a relatively long book, at least this version is. It's about hmm, 650 pages or so long. Keep that in mind as well. Brandon Sanderson books are not short, although Mistborn Era 2, uh, book number one, The Alloy of Law, is the shortest book that Brandon Sanderson has written. Uh... But yeah, because this is a standalone, it allows you to dip your toe into Brandon Sanson's world, get a feel of how he writes, get a feel of the sort of characters that he's writing, the way that he writes magic systems, all that kind of stuff. It gives you a good preview. I do agree with that. But um, look, honestly, I am very, you know, partial and very biased. And I definitely would say start with Final Empire because... This book is amazing. I haven't heard anyone who loves fantasy complain about this book. And once you read this book, you're going to be enticed like me to pick up the next book. With this one, because it's a standalone, yes, you get to dip your toe into the waters of Brandon Sanderson. But when you get to the end of this book, it's a standalone. So there is no more continuation of the story. So you pick and choose what you prefer to do. But this is what I picked up next. Then... So, to me, what worked out well with reading this after I read, sorry, <laughs> after I read The Bands of Mourning is that it was kind of a, a, a nice bridge book for me. I finished Mistborn, I had a nice little standalone before moving on to the Stormlight Archives and picking up The Way of Kings. Now, as I've already said to you guys, I started with the white uh, two-parter books, but this is what I would recommend, honestly, because it's one book, it's just easier. But... Here's some things you need to know about this book. First of all, unlike any of Brandon Sanderson's other books, this book as a one book bind up is over a thousand pages long, which makes it a double tome. Also, you need to know that this is an epic fantasy. So while Mistborn to me read like an epic fantasy, I found out what epic fantasy really is once I read this book. So with the Stormlight Archives, we have, uh, we have a really massive world that this uh, this book and this series is set in. And to me, what makes it an epic fantasy is because of how massive it is. It's not this, but to help you see it in your own mind, imagine that the setting of this book is based in a country. You know, call it whatever country you will. And let's just say that at the beginning of chapter one, we are in this country and we're up here. Say I have a map of a country in front of you. We're starting off up here. Then, you know, about three pages later, we're going to go over and see what's going on over here. Then about three pages later over here. Then we're there. There, 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 there. This is a very big world. So it is something you need to wrap your head around to begin with. I'm a very analytical reader and I love Brandon Sanderson so much and... Because by the time I got to this book, I not only had love for Brandon Sanderson, but I love talking about Brandon Sanderson's books on my channel, I had become very analytical with every book that I picked up in, you know, do I like the magic system? Do I like the way that he's written this? Do I like the characters? What do I think of their arcs? All that kind of stuff. And one of the biggest things that I focused on by the time I came to this book was the magic system, because every one of the books that I've read so far in the Cosmic Universe involves magic. The magic system was incredibly tough for me to wrap my head around because with this book, 
Brandon Sanderson holds your hand. We have our protagonist who has a magical ability who meets a mentor who explains the magic system to our protagonist in a way that we fully understand what's going on. In this book, we have our characters using magic pretty much from day one, like the very first couple of pages, and we have no idea what this magic system is, and that drove me absolutely batty that I finally had to come to the point where I thought, I'm just going to enjoy the book for what it is and not overanalyze it. Once I did that, I found I enjoyed myself a whole lot more, and by the time I felt grounded and centered in this world, that's when I got to really enjoy the book, and I ended up giving it five stars. So it will take you a long time to feel grounded and invested and knowledgeable of this world. It will take you a good 100 pages. Please be mindful of that. That is because it's an epic fantasy. There is so much going on that you are trying to learn and it is not explained to you right away. But in saying that, it is really good. In saying that, it's over a thousand pages, so keep that in mind. Once I had finished reading The Way of Kings, which I loved it so much, I straight away had to pick up the next book in the series, Words of Radiance, which then became my favourite book of the year, because this was my favourite book of the year till October, then I read this at the end of last month, and oh my goodness, it became my favourite book of the year, so... Yeah. Then after, now that I've finished this book, I'm not reading any more Stormlight Archive till December. And in December, I will pick up Oathbringer. And then in January, my plan, just to finish it off, in January, my plan is to pick up Rhythm of War so that I can complete what has been published so far of the Stormlight Archives. Once I have finished with Rhythm of War, I'm going to go back and read Elantris so that I've read the first book in this Cosmere universe, and then the only book that I will have left is Arcanum Unbounded. Now, the reason why this works for me, and it's a happy coincidence that it works, which I'll explain about in just a moment, but the reason why this works for me is because I will have then read all of the other books, uh, except for White Sand, uh, which White Sand is not included in this compendium. I will have read all the other books in the Cosmere universe, and then I can read this whole book and all of the little secret uh, scenes that we have, no matter which series they come from, I've read them all, so none of them will be spoilers for the actual series for me. Now, the thing that I mentioned earlier that I was going to say about this book is that how it worked out well for me is that while people have been telling me about Arcanum Unbounded, I had not been able to find Arcanum Unbounded anywhere until, I think, was it last week? Yeah, very early last week, I ended up going out to my... Uh, mall or shopping center of complex, whatever you want to call it. And I found this book in the bookstore and I was like, oh my God, the legends are true. And I purchased it. So if I had this book on me from the start, what I would have done, and again, this is where I'm saying I'm showing you what I did and what I recommend you do. What I would have done is I would have read Mistborn, The Final Empire, and then I would have read Mistborn, A Secret History from this book, because there's a character in this book who we learn more about in this book, so it would have flowed uh, a little better for me. In saying that, though, I'm not really complaining because, yay, the legends are true, so I'm still kind of on a high that I have this, but also because I would have gotten through all of those other books except for White Sand, no matter what I read in this book, none of it will be a spoiler for me anyway, so it just kind of works for me. I think the only thing that's really up in the air when it comes to any of the Cosmere universe is where you go after reading The Hero of Ages. I think everyone is pretty much in agreement, and you can check out a number of other uh, reading orders for the Cosmere universe on Booktube check out what other people say, but the majority of people do say start with the final empire, then go through it, go to Well of Ascension, then go on to the Hero of Ages, and then once you've finished Hero of Ages, that's where we all kind of differ and say, you know, this is what you should do, and that is all because of how very different the Alloy of Law actually is. So it's up to you, knowing what you now know from the pointers I've given you, if you want to go from Hero of Ages to Alloy of Law, or if you want to go from Hero of Ages to either Warbreaker, or if you want to go on to Elantris before going on to this one, or if you want to dive right in knowing what I've now told you. But uh, 
yeah, this is the wonderful world that is the Cosmic Universe of Brandon Sanderson. And as you can see, this bookshelf is very empty now because all I put on this bookshelf is my Cosmic Universe. So that goes to show you how much I love this series. I highly, 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 I cannot highly recommend this enough to you guys, The Cosmic Universe by Brandon Sanderson. If you are a fantasy lover, you will love The Cosmic Universe because Brandon Sanderson is amazing at what he does. His writing style is easy enough to read, his characters are always very captivating, his magic systems are very captivating as well. They are a hard magic system, so, well, for most of them, they're a hard magic system, so you should know the boundaries of them and everything about them, and it's just, he, he has done such an amazing job that I can't highly recommend it enough. But that's where I'm going to leave it for you guys. If you have any comments, thoughts, or questions about the Cosmic Universe in general, or reading order, or anything to do with the Cosmic Universe, let me know in the comment section below, and we'll discuss it there. Um, until then, I'm going to let you guys go. Peace, blessings, and so, so, so much love. I post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, and Sunday, and I'll see you guys again soon. Mwah. Thank you so much for watching, and when it comes to the Cosmic Universe, happy reading! Bye, guys! Bye! Bye!